Cheers, and welcome to our tabletop discussion on the Voluntary Virtues Network. I'm your host, Steve, and I'm here with Mike and Matt, and we're discussing you're just 17 beliefs away from true freedom. Part three, right? Is that what we're on now? Part three. So. Part three. So, we're on to number seven. But first, let's talk about what we're drinking. Yes. This is a brand new uh, cider. I've never tried this before. It's by Angry Orchard. It's Elderflower. It's, I don't know, I kind of felt that it was kind of bland compared to their other ciders. What do you think? I'd say the same. I'm usually a fan of stronger drinks, but it's not bad. Uh, I am glad that they changed from twist offs to bottle caps. Right. Yeah, fair. I've gotten twist offs that were not very carbonated. And yeah, much crisper. Yeah, it, it tastes better with the uh, bottle cap. It does. It, it, it just seals better because otherwise the machine's doing it like that. There's the twist on thing. And uh, when I used to uh, work at a facility, similar similar mechanism it screws up every time not every time obviously <laughs> but like the ratio to like how many it actually gets on to how many gets mixed up is like one out of a hundred gets put on there wrong so yeah that makes sense yeah so uh i i really like their that's an apple cider by the way uh, i really like their apple ginger cider um but i wasn't wasn't real impressed with this one i mean it's good for a drink but not real impressed Agreed. A little bland. But, you know, it's not Mickey's or Old English, so, you know. <laughs> Boone's Farm. Boone's Farm. Oh, man. Too, Wait, much, too much sugar, too little alcohol. To be honest, it reminds me of a drink called a Sidewalk Slammer, where you take a Mickey's. <laughs> okay. You drink 12 ounces. Uh, you pour sparks in there, and it tastes uh, like this. Uh, <laughs> It gets you messed up, though, I'll tell you. <laughs> Sparks, yeah, I did. Yeah, I had a... Uh, way back when I had a six-pack of those. Oh. All in one night, that was a bad scene. Yeah, that was, I remember that, we that got a, a whole case mm. one time. Oh, man. <laughs> it was a hell of a hangover. I woke oh. up with like a, with a painful liver. Like, my liver oh, was actually in pain, yeah. What was that drink that that guy was drinking when he came up to our meeting that one time? Juice. Yes, juice. juice. Oh, yes. That, juice. He was fucked up that night. Who was it? I don't even remember. The grand into a wall. Oh, that was no, yeah, I missed that one. I remember hearing about that later because that's how the running gag got started about not running into John's yes. wall. Yeah, yes. yeah. precisely. Yeah. <laughs> Ran into it twice actually. <laughs> and Just then make sure it was then, there. Then nearly off a cliff. Yes. Ugh. And that is a cliff. Moving on. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so number seven. Freedom is not free. It would be nice if it were. But there are people willing to coerce. Making some freedom for yourself requires purposeful action. You must know what you want to be free to do, and you must organize your resources towards the end of creating that freedom for yourself. Freedom is free. <laughs> Cost a buck oh five. <laughs> what do you think, Mike? Yeah, um... I... F it would be... I don't want to use the word crass because I don't think that fits right. But it would be a little bit arrogant to say that one individual could be as free as they want to be in every single aspect of their life within their lifetime and be able to achieve it solely by themselves. So oh, you have, absolutely. Yeah, I agree. so you have, to, you have to work towards it and work with other people in order to achieve your goals. And so. You have to think about like what is your most important priority. Do I want to be more freer with what goes on with my money? Where can I put my money? Can I take my money out of the bank and put it back in without having to like show my ID three different times and put in my social <laughs> security number? Or am I more worried about being able to travel without being harassed for like a little sticker on the back of my car? What is your priority? Well, you like know? I think what like we discussed in the beginning, mm -hmm. um, it depends on what you want to do yeah exactly i guess that, that i was trying to i was trying to get at that i think something like that it was yeah so i think it says something about the end in there what, what you actually like right yeah yeah towards the end um i think i think everybody knows the cliche uh freedom isn't free america fuck yeah <laughs> you just kind um, of think it was like a like a go joke. army uh, you know idea a sort of a mantra, that, I, That's not what it's saying here. Yeah, exactly. What, what this is saying here is that 
you are not, you're not just gonna go around the world, or you're, not, you're just not gonna be free one day because you feel like being free. Yeah. It takes purposeful action, it takes, pur- pur- it takes work, it takes planning, it takes setting goals and, and working towards them. It does. That kind of thing. Yeah, it's I think that's all it's saying here. Pretty much, in a nutshell. That sounds accurate to me. Number and eight. I would agree with that. Um, number eight. Number eight. Your desire for freedom does not imply an effective ability to choose between 100% or 0% freedom. Your effective range of choice, i.e. what you can get, depends on your desired actions, your resources, and how you use them. That seems pretty self-explanatory to me. Yeah, I kind of think it's a reiteration of, 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 the, of the statement above. You know, it's kind a of lot of them seem to be really similar. Repetitive, yeah. Yeah. it seems like. Um, this one has a little bit of different connotation, I think. Um, uh, even if, suppose in the future, we had a free society, um, government gone... Mm-hmm. People cooperated together generally to meet mutual be- uh, for mutual benefit. And hopefully our hair isn't all too gray at that time. This is what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> you know, I'll actually be able to do stuff without like having to have a cane. You know, like. <laughs> well, but, yeah. well, let's let's say a hundred years in the future. This right. is this is a well established situ- uh, fair enough society now mm-hmm. at that po- at this point. Yeah. You still, you still don't have 100% freedom. You're still going to have criminals. Yeah, of course. And every time somebody robs somebody else, they are... Infringing on their freedom. Yeah, yeah limiting mm-hmm. their freedom. Every time somebody assaults somebody else. Every time somebody, you know... But every time you make a choice that is what you want, mm-hmm. then you, you gain more freedom, right? Yeah, we're well, not... Well, what you want... Every time you make a choice in what you want... Without coercion. Without coercion. Yeah, that's right. the main thing behind With, freedom is without coercion. Yeah, that, that, that's a, that's a so really So, obviously, obviously, you can't effect, effectively choose between 100% and 0%. Um, even the average individual who's going about their lives law-abiding, which is a farce anyway, but... Because it's completely impossible to fall every single law all the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But um, the average person who has no idea what's actually going on, they still don't have 0% freedom. Yeah. They still have some measure of freedom. Um, it's kind of... It's kind of the difference, I think, between a slave and a citizen. It's kind of... Citizen is kind of a free range slave, so to speak. So, are, so if, if we're if we're gonna <laughs> define that, are we gonna say that like a, a slave may have ten percent freedom and a citizen has fifty percent? I think it'd be maybe? pretty hard to get to zero. Yeah, you'd have to yeah. be compl- you'd have to be like an automation, completely getting every order from somebody. Yeah, uh, I, I think it could be possible. It would be extremely difficult though. Yeah. I think we're kind of going on a tangent though. I think I think we really kind of get the idea of this point. Correct. Um, we can move on. Yeah. Yes, we can. So, number nine. <laughs> we are free to move on. <laughs> <laughs> you will not suddenly become 100% free. You will have to do it yourself, one carefully planned step at a time. Again, we've just discussed that. We uh, completely agree, understand. If you're going to have freedom, you're going to have to make decisions, you're going to have to choose... A free path versus the path of a citizen slave. Um, you And you're not going to be 100% free, but to get to a noticeable amount of freedom, you're going to have to take steps, you're going to have to plan carefully and meet goals and work towards a given... A specific end. Rubbing your lucky rabbit's foot will not make you free. <laughs> you actually have Dang to... Dang it. 
I always thought that was going to work. No. Yeah, you actually have to do meaningful action in order to become And I eat that life. rabbit for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, interesting, interestingly enough, the, the superstition behind rabbit's foot, mm-hmm. the, the way a rabbit's foot was imbued with luck is that it was severed from a rabbit in a cemetery... Holy ground. Wow. Okay. On a full moon by a black shaman or witch. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> so there, today there. I learned. <laughs> today I learned. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. The morning. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, well it didn't have. Uh, the shaman didn't have to be black, but it was more powerful. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Got it. That, that was the actual superstition. Today I also learned. <laughs> it, goes, it goes back to the, the familiar animal thing. Do you, you know what I'm talking about? Mm. Uh, witches, witches were thought to have familiar, familiars. Uh, commonly black cats were thought to be familiars. But also rabbits were also highly okay. uh, I think, yeah, popular I think for that. And that's, that's where the luck came from. Was that right. It was assumed that the rabbit was a familiar. Because witches are evil, but if you do certain things, stuff they make can be good luck for you. Yes. As long as you make a rabbit's foot as a witch, you will not be put thrown into the Inquisition, <laughs> right? Is that how that works? Make rabbit's foot to get out of that. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> enough of that tangent. Number 10. Number 10. Your present condition of freedom is probably far from optimum, duh, from your most desired range of actions and for your present resources. Your approach to this optimum must be discovered by careful planning and investigation. You do not have automatic knowledge of the subject, and living your life like the general populace will get you what they get. Duh. Yeah, <laughs> if, yeah if, you do, if you're doing the same I mean, thing everybody else is doing every day... If that, you act like a slave, you're going to be a slave. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that sums it up pretty it, well. It, it, and... Normal people are stupid. You need to educate yourself. I, I said I. I think I just. Uh, I just completely. Yeah. Nailed this point right there. <laughs> you know, it, it doesn't matter whatever beautiful and wonderful uh, ideas you may have about a peaceful society or you know or at least a more cohesive society. That doesn't matter if it's all in your head if you never actually do anything about it. It's you know if you just sit there and you know. Uh, uh, file your income taxes, you know, get all your registration, permits, all that sort of stuff. If you continue to do all that exactly like that and still have all these thoughts about how you want to be, you know, in a voluntary society, it doesn't change anything because you haven't actually done anything. So, again, pretty obvious exactly what Steve said. It's duh. Durhay might be a better one. To, uh, to summarize your notes here, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the notes did it pretty well there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, moving on to number 11. We're moving pretty good on this, this fair, one. Fair enough. A state and its agencies will never proclaim themselves abolished, oft, impotent, or irrelevant. I think this is actually a really good point. Uh, we think... Uh, there's often the idea that if we just get rid of the state, everything will be fine. Um... I think he mentions in the preface of the 17 that uh, he, he believed at one time that if we could just get rid of government, everything, it would be roses and mm. unicorns frolicking in the field with a rainbow. Um, but that's not the case. Uh, fact is, and history shows that you get rid of one government and another one's going to come in its place unless you, unless we do something. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a very good point. And, yeah. and when the government falls is not the time to start doing something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, that, that's something I guess is isn't talked uh, you, enough about. Yeah. That um, they're never going to say, oh, I guess we lost. Let's go back home. Go do some gardening. No, they're always going to say along the line, like, oh, you know, we're still relevant. It's a patriotic thing to listen to us no matter what happens. 
you know, uh, to, to not go off too much on a tangent, but to relate it to, uh, you know, a society that was going, or not a society, a government that was going down that, down that slope to being irrelevant, uh, while the Roman Empire was collapsing, the, you know, their, the currency was getting destroyed because they just kept filling the silver coins with more and more copper. Right. And, you know, then uh, the Emperor Diocletian put out an edict that said, more or less, if you don't use the currency, you're being unpatriotic. You know, I mean, and that was 2,000 years ago. They've been playing this game a whole long time just trying to, you know, more propaganda mm -hmm. to try to cover, you know, paper mache over it, you know? So. Yeah. Um, and what, what, what I think is telling about this, too, I mean, in the, in the whole voting, voting argument, I don't vote personally. There se but there seems to be an idea that if we can just get everybody to stop voting, that the government will just disappear. Not going to happen. If there is zero people that show up on voting day, the government's just going to keep on going. They don't even have a majority voting, which is kind of funny to me. Yeah. They claim a majority want this. So Dagger decided she wanted to be in the podcast. Thought she'd turn the audio off just to make us point out that she's in it. She wasn't introduced, but this is Dagger right here. Anyway. <laughs> So, so the fact that not even a majority of people vote is something that is, you can just laugh at the state saying they have a majority of people want this, when really it's not even a majority. They don't have even an average of 33% or some odd number, so it's laughable. And I remember... They'll vote for themselves too, right? You know, you'll have 535 people voting for president and that's all that matters because there's 535 people, you know? Like, well, you still use that, but yeah, sorry, Steve. Yeah. Yeah, I remember when Clinton first got elected in mm. school, my teachers, my math teacher decided that we were going to work out the numbers. Mm -hmm. It came out to 11% voted for Clinton. Wow. And I, 11% of the total population. And I don't think it's gotten better. <laughs> it probably hasn't, yeah. I remember similar numbers when I worked out the math. I can't remember which election it was, but it's laughable to say that they have a majority saying this is what they want. And even if it was a majority, that doesn't mean a damn thing. Yeah, just because the majority says something is true obviously does not make it by default correct. You know. So. Yeah, so anyway, moving on. There are not pigs everywhere, and there are very few places at the time. At at all time. Very few places all the time. This one, I had to read over and over again because I think there's something wrong grammatically or something here. It just didn't sound right. Uh, pigs, obviously, they mean cops. Or feds or some sort of, you know. Somebody yeah. who might show up at your house with a gun, I think, is the general term. Right? Yeah. Basically, what I think he's saying here is that you don't need to fear the cops. The cops can't be everywhere at once. Accurate. You know, I mean, uh, as much as the NSA is recording every single phone call in the United States, that doesn't mean that and they have the ability to listen in on every single phone call and know what everybody's talking about all the time and follow your every move, everyone. I'm sure there's there's some people they are following it all day, but that doesn't mean it's everyone. So And yes. they've certainly cracked down a lot since the seventies, but I still think that this is true. You can get away with a lot of illegal activity. Quite a bit. Without yeah, them you know, all of a sudden on your doorstep the next day. Like they Yeah. The the whole entire It's not like in the movies. I, oh, have you guys ever seen that movie uh, Last Action Hero? Oh God, decades ago. Yeah, yeah. it was uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Yeah, I it, it was about a boy who got a magic ticket that would allow him to go into movies. Mm -hmm. And that's about all I remember. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I remember this part, and I thought it was hilarious, and I to this day think it's hilarious. Uh, the bad guy from the movie comes out of the movie. And is in real life now. Mm -hmm. And they have to track him down and get him back in the movie, blah, blah, blah. Does he have an eye patch or is he a new mad scientist? <laughs> or like... Close. Okay. But what's funny is, you know, in movies, it, what, what I was pointing out is in movies, you know, somebody gets murdered and the cops are there within minutes. Mm -hmm. Well, 
he comes out of the movies and he's on the streets of New York and he just shoots some guy indiscriminately. Right. And he stands there and he's looking around, no cops from anywhere. And then he starts yelling, I just killed the man and I did it on purpose. And you hear a guy in the background going, shut up. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that is, that is an accurate representation of the way the world works. The, there's that, uh, I like to call it, and I'm sure I'm not the first one to say it exactly like this, but it's, it's the myth of security. There's really, you know, I don't care what kind of security system you have. There's always a way around it if somebody really, really wanted to get into your house or your business or whatever. It did, most of them aren't really. All it is is just a really loud noise and flashing lights. And if you really knew what you're going to go get, if you're going to go rob a place, you go in there, you get it, you'd be out. They're not going to find you. The cops will show up. They'll turn off the alarm system, file a report, and say, we're so sorry. File, talk to your insurance company. That's about it. Yeah. For the record, we're not advocating that anybody go out and murder somebody just because they can get away with it. Or rob a business, etc. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's Obviously, we, anyway. we, we, believe in, we believe in private property and the non-aggression principle. So, yeah. Just pointing out the cops that can't be everywhere. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I remember, actually, this is, this is a true story. My, my buddy had his bike stolen. Right. He was a mountain biker. Mm-hmm. Got his bike. Excuse me. Got his bike stolen. Called the cops. Cops took the report. Didn't do nothing. Mm-hmm. He then did some investigative work. Found his bike. Told the cops where his bike was. They still did nothing. Oh, he then damn. went to the guy. Talked to him. Got his bike back. All on his own. Cops did nothing. <laughs> so, I mean, just goes to show you that even in legitimate cases where you've been robbed, you're better off going it alone anyway. Yeah, I mean, cops are lazy, you know? I mean, it's, that's all, you know, that's the whole, like, hero worship thing when they're like, oh, they're out there protecting and serving and all this sort of stuff. It's like, do you ever really sat there and watch what cops do all day? Like, Nine times out of ten, you see a cop in his cop car. He's not checking to see if anybody's speeding. He is on Facebook, on his cell phone. <laughs> they're not really... Solitaire. Uh, yeah, or solitaire or something. You know, they're just hanging out, you know? So. So, number 13. Lucky, Lucky number 13. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, Steve. <laughs> Stole the words out of your mouth. All right. Uh, okay. When the state claims to control... Uh, excuse me, Sorry. What the state can, claims to control is not the same as what it does control. You will have to investigate and decide for yourself. This is a corollary of 11 and 12. I feel like they're all corollaries of all the other ones. <laughs> but. Fair. It, it is getting very uh, very <laughs> repetitive. But, yeah, they, uh, I mean, shit, they claim to control just about everything. You know, and so we've got a handle on this. Don't worry, we care about you. You're our citizens. We're going to take care of you. Don't worry about it. I mean, where, where could we start on that? You know, everything from the FDA. Don't worry, your food's safe. Hey, isn't it that every single medication that's ever been recalled was already approved by the FDA? That's weird, huh? <laughs> you know, like, you know, and then... As a matter of fact, more deaths have been caused by FDA-approved drugs than... Illegal, illicit drugs. Fair enough. Yeah, there you go. Uh, you know, and then, you know, there's a, a, you know, E. coli outbreak. And then there's the comical thing that always seems to happen. They're like, oh, it was the spinach. No, 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 uh, no not the spinach. Sorry, we were wrong that one time. Turns out it was the tomatoes. Wait, no, it wasn't the tomatoes. Cilantro. We're positive this time it was the cilantro. I remember that happened a couple years back. Big coli <laughs> outbreak. They said it was like five different vegetables before they finally figured it out. And wasn't it the state of Indiana or something that decided that they were going to change pie to 3.14? Wow. That, that, <laughs> that, that, it was just, a while back, though. Yeah. It, wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't recent. That was like... I don't remember exactly when. I think it was, it was like the 90s or something like that. We're going to yeah. round it down to 3.14. Yeah. Officially. Officially. We, we have done it. <laughs> it's like there's a, there's a long... We're going to change the law of gravity. Yeah. There's a law in California. We're going to amend says, it with a legislative action. And make it so, because we <laughs> did. Anyway. Yeah. So, 
The state will not become impotent in a geographical area at all or at the same time. Oh, I'm sorry. The state will not become impotent in all geographical areas at the same okay. time. So, yeah, yeah so basically move to the freest place if you want to be free. Yeah, I, I mean that 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 that's cr- or or take the same actions that the freest place is taking, right? Yeah. That that that's that, that's a good idea too. That's what do you mean by that? Idea. So if if uh, one community has figured out how to live without the state, then follow their lead and do the same thing. Whatever they are doing to make it so that the state is irrelevant. What's a community, thing. Matt? <laughs> <laughs> a, a group of individuals, uh, people working together for their own means. Yeah. Well, but I think the reason those places are free and other places aren't is not necessarily because... It's their actions, though, right? Well, on an individual level, yeah. But I think with a large population, you're not going to get a large population to all suddenly stop being I I think if if you have the right ideas then you can get those ideas being passed. I kind of feel like that was the problem when we decided to run a mayoral candidate. Yeah. So I I think that the main thing you want is ideas that work. And once you have those ideas that work without government, then people are going to say, hey, look, this idea works. You don't need force. That's optimal. I think that if you have those ideas... Then people are gonna follow them, and and on their own free of their own free will, because they're good ideas because they work. And it doesn't know. require force. I think I think there's a lot there's plenty of history to say that people are stupid, and will will follow what they're told because they've been trained from birth basically to do what they're told. But if you show them that it works and they don't need to use force, and force takes. More action. I, I'd say people force. aren't rational, though. People are emotional creatures. I mean, they people can be rational, but I, I but think, I think just showing by and large, uh, studies have been done that show that the more rational, logical information, irrefutable information you give them to the contrary of their current idea, the more firmly they believe in their current idea. That sometimes people want to believe what they want to believe, but perhaps the long or the short of this of this statement is, if you if you want to be freer and you don't want to be around a whole bunch of cops, if you move out to the boonies, guess what? There aren't any cops out there. As a matter of fact, there are so few cops out there that if a cop is coming up the road, your neighbor will call you who lives <laughs> three miles down the road and will say, "Hey, there's a cop coming up the road. Just so you know, you know." I, I will agree that, though. That's that it's easier. Yeah, yeah. I think it's easier just to move, but then if. Um, but but then even if everybody who who thought that way moved to a certain geographical location, you're still gonna have everybody else outside of there disagreeing with you, and, and you're still gonna have the same problem. See, so I think if you can explain to those people who do not have that idea that this way works better, and you actually don't have to use force to do so, and it's more efficient, and if you say all these things, I think it'll help. I I think. I think it's important to bring people into your community through education, through dialogue, but I think for your own personal freedom, it's best to move to a place where you can have greater freedom. Now, if we're going to have these communities that are, you know, that are really are that are really educated and, you know, centralized about, you know, about what is the most logical thing to do to, to create a happier society, would would there be sentient robots involved in this at all, you know? Uh, and if there were to be sentient robots, would at any point in time involve robot sex? Oh, my days speaking of robot sex. sex it looks like... Time, time, time is up. Time is up. Damn it. Next time, robot sex. Robot sex, neck episode. Cheers. <laughs>